And I'd like to introduce our speaker today, Patrick Tien, CEO of Gazelle Systems. He's the creator of the Rhythm software and author of Execute Without Drama. He's a worldwide expert on helping, helping companies use KPIs and dashboards to focus their teams on the right things so they can grow their companies faster and better. He's also <coughs> been creating KPIs for many, many years. Now, creating the right KPIs that will drive results is an art. And over the years, Patrick has helped create thousands of KPIs and dashboards for clients and is excited to share his insights with you today. Patrick, it's great to be here with you today. Hey, Ryan, it's awesome to be here. It's awesome to be here. I'm going to take it over now, right? Sounds great. Yes. Okay, let's go. So I have a guest with me today. I'd like to introduce, and this is Barry. Uh, Barry is one of our coaches. Welcome, Barry, today. Glad to be here. That's cool. And, and he's one of the many coaches we have in our stable here at Gazelle Systems, uh, helping companies connect strategy with execution. Uh, Barry said today because we're going to discuss a client case study, uh, one of the clients that Barry looks after. Uh, this case study will help us to share how to take a real business problem and use KPIs to get a team focused for the quarter using our, our proven Gazelle Systems framework for KPIs. And Ryan mentioned the tool, uh, the leading indicator creator. If you can download that or, or get that, that would be great. Uh, you can think through your KPIs as we go over this session today. So let's get started. I'd like to introduce Steve Nabity. He's the CEO of AccuQuilt, and that's the case study we're going to do today. Uh, this is a very successful YPO company. We are delighted to be able to work with such companies and CEOs like Steve. Uh, AccuQuilt actually sets the trends worldwide in quilting. They have a very successful and growing business. It is just such a privilege to work with Steve. So today, we're going to share with you some learnings on how we help Steve build KPIs to get his team really focused for the quarter. That's right, Patrick. So the company that we'll use this example today was literally started at the kitchen table of the CEO. They give you tools to cut fabric so that you can make beautiful quilts. Now, there's a great heritage here in the United States for quilting. When growing up, my grandmother was making quilts. They were award-winning quilts, actually, that won first, second, third place all over the state of Texas. And the fabric cuts that she made were tedious and they were meticulous. And it's also why later in life she had to stop because she had arthritis in her hands. Aki Quilt actually solved that problem and more for quilters around the world by giving them better fabric cuts faster, plus their products are safe and easy to use. I visited them in Omaha and they have a beautiful design and, and training center for quilters. It's a quilter's dream come true with a museum quality type gallery. It has fabric arts exhibits and a state of the art quilting studio. So Patrick, what happened was that Steve was thinking about his company. How do I get my company on track? How do we get them pointed in the right direction? His question was, how do I hit the bullseye? on KPIs. Now this is something that Steve and his team have been working on for really for quite a while. They've been trying to struggle out or answer the question of what those were. What was the right target for their company? And as he thought about that, he wondered what it would be like to have all of his team members ready to launch and headed in the same direction, with the same energy, for the same outcomes. So Steve picked up the phone and gave me a call. I'm his rhythm coach here with Gazelle Systems and we were able to help him hit the target. And after that happened, after that call, Patrick, I just started thinking about this. So, wow, wouldn't this be a great example for other CEOs and teams? So Steve, Patrick, and I would like to share this gift with you today. We'd like to take a look at this. Man, that's great. Hey, I love your video thingy, man. Hey, but if everyone stays for the rest of the full webcast, at the end of it, we'll tell them what this thing is that you do. Totally awesome. All right. So stay to learn what that video thing is. Okay. But anyway, today we will learn the meat of three things. How to use leading indicators to drive results. How to ask questions to figure out your KPIs. And third, but not least, how do we use KPIs to communicate and focus your team? So Barry, tell us, what was Steve's business challenge? Steve's business challenge was profitability. He wanted to increase profits. Now there are a lot of things that you can do to push to increase your profits. For Steve, he determined one of his biggest opportunities was to improve product and merchandising, which would then ultimately increase his sales. Now to do that, he felt that his team needed better customer input. 
And to do that, well, they had to become better listeners to their customers. So Steve's team worked on a theme for the quarter, which was Hear Me Now, which you see on the screen. Patrick, that's why his question was, how do I get customer feedback to produce better products that will ultimately drive profit? So it sounds like he really wanted to make sure that his team was paying attention and listening to customers to get them into the product, right? Exactly right. And that's, that's how they came to hear me now. That's great because he clearly knew what results he wanted. And that's really important. It is very important to know what your end result is before we even talk about KPIs. You've got to know what result you want to achieve. We must begin with the end in mind. So let's now talk about how we help Steve figure out the right KPI to drive this result, which was better products and merchandising to ultimately get better profits. So we have a four-step process to help you think through your KPIs. We start with the business challenge or the business problem. What do you want to solve? What business problem are we trying to solve? We now then have to get to step two, a very clear desired result. What is the desired result or the desired outcome that you want to get? And we call this the results indicator. So now that you know how to measure your results, your results with the result indicator, we want to then dig deeper, step three, dig deeper with questions so that, so that we can then get what I call your leading indicator. Now when we get your leading indicator, we then have to use red, yellow, green, clear success criteria. Uh, that to measure your progress and that's how we drive results. And so we're going to get you to a leading indicator today. So let's talk a little bit about KPIs. I like to teach that there are typically two types of KPIs. There are results indicators and there are leading indicators. Results indicators is typically what has happened. If you're driving this car, notice it's a rhythm car very kind of yes, yeah, I like that. Okay. So so if you're driving this car, uh, results indicators is what you see in your rear view mirror. And it's important because you do want to know what you've achieved in the past, right? So you know what to plan for the future. Leading indicators is what you're looking through the windshield, what the future brings. And if you do this right, you can look at the leading indicators that help you drive your future results. So let's apply this to Steve. So Steve's case, the past result that he had was profit. He, he is a profitable company. The future result that he's looking for is better profits through the right products for merchandising. That's what he's hoping for. And so how do we get the right KPI, the right leading indicator to do this? So I'm going to show you how our tool works. So if you look at me, you've downloaded this leading indicator creator. This is my gift to you today. Uh, you can follow through this with Steve. So he wanted to figure out his business problem, which is customer-driven products, right? And to do that, the desired outcome is increased profit. At the end of the day, that's what he wanted. Now, there are multiple things that could drive profit, but this particular one is what he wants to focus on, which is customer-driven products to drive profit. And then how do we measure that profit? You measure the profit with, with EBITDA. Okay, and then the next thing was, how do we get the right leading indicator? Now, to get the right leading indicator, we have to ask a lot of questions, a lot of questions. So before I go to the questions, though, I kind of want to share a couple of, a, a, a few tips on how to choose the right thing to focus on. Because... You know, in this case, uh, it was products and merchandising, but Steve did share with us they had three or four things to increase profit. And one of the questions he asked us in our call was, you know, gee, I've got three or four things. How do I get it down to just one thing? How do I get it down to just one thing? How can you say no to the other two or three things? We shared with Steve that you don't say no to the other three things. Rather, you sequence. The secret to success here is sequencing. You want to choose the most impactful one to focus on and drive on. And then you sequence the others into the next couple of quarters. That way, you can focus on one big thing. Now, in the polls, we asked a question, and a couple of questions. 76% of you guys are using the results indicators, uh, and 60% of you guys have a main thing. That's great. A main thing to focus on will help you build lasting habits and improvements. So you don't want to just achieve the result. You want to also be able to improve habits and processes along the way. So the secret to doing that is not to focus on two main things, but to really focus on one main thing. Now, the other two or three things that Steve could do to improve profitability, he, he kind of did that too, but it wasn't the main focus. The main focus was to hear me now to the clients, right? Okay, so here comes the hard part. Here comes the hard part. And people are caught by surprise when I say that. I mean, 
G, you know, after all, it's just about asking questions, right? Uh, so here's where we have to dig deep with questions. So Mary, let's share how we did this uh, with Steve. So Steve wanted to have a KPI that would help him focus his team. Focus on getting customer feedback that would then influence their product and their merchandising and ultimately their profit. And so to do that, you've got to dig deep. And when you've dug deep, you've got to dig even deeper. So we need to learn to ask a lot of questions. I almost titled this webcast, The Art of Asking Questions. It's like peeling back the onion. You're going to get through a number of layers before you get to the heart. And you might cry along the way, <laughs> but you've got to keep going. We are now going to demonstrate how we help Steve to do this. We're going to kind of slow down the pace, and we're going to go through this process. It's going to be fun. Barry, are you ready? I am. You ready? Okay. okay. All right. Let's start crying. Now. Okay. So let me set it up. The question or challenge that, that Steve had was he wanted to make sure that they were listening to customers so that they could provide the right product to merchandising. And how do we make sure of that? So the first question I opened up with Steve was, how did you know that you're not listening long enough today? Patrick, I recall that when you asked that, Steve said, well, our products could be better. We could hit the mark better. And their pain was that they felt like they were not getting the reception of new products for customers that they wanted to get. Okay, and with that in mind, what could Steve expect to be different if he listened better? Steve felt like their products could better fit the customer needs, so there could be a better fit there. He wanted his team to become better listeners. He wanted them to create better products, better merchandising strategies for retailers, so their products were better fitted to the needs of their customers. All right, so you wanted to have better fitted products. And so the question I asked Steve then was, what is he actually listening for? What are we actually trying to hear that would help us create better products? One of the main things that I heard from Steve was to anticipate trends. Patrick, I know you're familiar with an old Wayne Gretzky quote regarding why he was such a great hockey player. And Wayne said this, I don't skate to where the puck is, I skate to where it's going. And that's essentially what Steve wanted his team to be stronger at skating to where the puck is going, and knowing the trends, and know them early enough that they can have products waiting when their customers arrive. So that's great. So we're trying to listen for trends, right? That's good. That's a good point. So we're going to keep going. I'm going to ask a few more questions. You ready? Well, hold on, Patrick, because this is, this is the place where most people stop. We've already asked about three questions now. Yeah, okay. So, so if we stop now, though, we end up building a KPI for trends. True. But um, I recall you pushed forward. You kept pushing forward, Steve. Why, why did you do that? Give us some insight. So I pushed Steve with a little bit more of questions. I did that because I always ask at least five questions, at least five. Uh, to stop here would be premature. If we stopped here, for example, we'd now be talking about building a KPI for trends. Building a KPI for trends does not yet answer his questions. It is not the trends uh, that are important. It's what we do. It's the actions that's important. It's what we do. So let's keep going, man. That was good insight, Barry, by the way. That was, that was really good insight. So how do we figure out the trends, Barry? How do we figure out the trends? Well, you know, when you ask this question, Steve realized that they needed customer ideas. They needed customer suggestions to figure out trends. So what they really wanted was to get customer suggestions. You can't just decide on what a trend is going to be. You don't get to pick it out of the air. So you need your customer suggestions to get the trends. So you want the customer suggestions. I think he called that customer interactions. That's right. And, and so I asked Steve, you know, are all customer interactions and suggestions good? <laughs> well, and if our team is asking the right questions, then we should be able to gather information about, about market needs. Smart interactions is actually what we need, not just any interaction. We don't want people having pointless conversations with our customers. Okay. Steve pointed out that uh, he can, he can put good and smart interactions into a customer suggestion database. Yes. yes, so smart interactions. So smart interactions is what you want to. So okay, if we think about smart interactions for a second, then the next question I asked was, okay, so how do we now measure that we're getting smart interactions? Well, Steve's idea was that he could put these suggestions into a database and could actually count them, and that this would actually change the way that they interact with their customers. Okay, bingo. So the key point here, uh, key point is that Steve said that this would change the way they interact with customers. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking for, man. We're looking for actions. We're looking for change. Yeah, that's a, that's a keeper. That's a good insight. Okay, good. So we're looking for change. So when you guys think through your KPIs or you think through these questions, that's what you're looking for, change and or actions.
And so it doesn't get any more complicated than that. A KPI that he ended up with here was a number of client suggestions logged into his database because he only logged what he thought were good suggestions. He didn't log the bad suggestions or the dumb suggestions. He said, we don't need dumb ideas, we need smart ideas. That's right. Our final landing point was number of client suggestions logged. And so to summarize this, right, if this is what happened, you look at this, I asked about six questions, if you notice this, right, I asked about six questions, and these are kind of the questions that we asked. And it's difficult, man, it's difficult to stay on track and dig deep, and this is what I mean by digging deep, asking at least five questions. You know, Patrick, I know that with our other coaches, I'm not the only one who's discovered this. It really seems hard to dig past three questions. Steve and, and his team have gone at this multiple times. My observation was that you pushed through with more questions after, after he probably would have stopped. And this is the place where we as coaches, for example, get great satisfaction in bringing value to clients. Yeah, and it's, I've experienced this myself in the sessions I've run. You know, it's hard to dig deep by yourself. And here's when an outside coach can really help you. So share with me, you know, what does Steve feel the value of this digging deep session was for him? So the value of this digging deep is he's going to align the company on this KPI per quarter. He'll maximize the energy of his team, and he can be confident that he's got the right metric in place. One of Steve's comments at this point in our conversation, Patrick, was that uh, he and his team might not have chosen the same KPIs for the quarter based on the conversation. So he's very happy that we had that chance to talk. Okay, so the value to Steve was that his team was focused on the central main thing for the whole quarter, right? Mm -hmm. All the energy was focused on this, and I would call that his return on payroll. In other words, his, his value here was that everyone was focused on the main thing as compared to working hard on a number of different things, not quite so focused. So that was the value to him. That was good. I'm happy that was good for him. So allow me to summarize a few helpful tips for our audience that came through that out of asking questions. So first, uh, it sounds simple, uh, but it's not necessarily easy. You want to ask at least five questions, but you can count them, right? You can count them. You can go one, two, three, and I'm going to dig deeper. So you want to ask at least five questions. I find six, sometimes even seven, really does the trick. Then you want to ask yourself, what actions will your KPI drive? If it doesn't drive actions, you want to keep pushing. So for example, you ask me why I didn't stop at the third one about trends. Mm -hmm. that, there are no actions there. I want to keep going until I can figure out how to drive actions. Then you want to ask yourself, can you actually affect or influence this key performance indicator? If you cannot influence this key performance indicator, it is not a good KPI, okay? So, Patrick, you wrote the book on red, red, yellow, green, and execute without drama. So tell us, how do we red, yellow, green the number of intelligent customer comments? This is the last step that people often forget about. So let's, let's do it, but let's keep it real simple. So we're going to red, yellow, green what Steve did. So how many calls, do you recall, how many calls did Steve feel they wanted? How many, how many um, smart interactions did they want to have logged in the database? That would be green. Well, you know, I think right here is where Steve actually asked, do you always need to get it down to a number? Yeah, I like numbers, man. If you don't get it down to a number, it's really hard to measure. So I think most things, now I say most, I'm not going to say everything, there may be some exceptions, but if I can get it down to a number, mm -hmm. I'm going to push hard to get it down to a number. Uh, in this case, we're good, right? We've gone down to his uh, number of client interactions logged in the database. That's so right. green is the goal. So what was green for him? You know, green was somewhere in the range of 100. So let's use that for example, 100. Great. So green is 100. Red, red would be the, uh, the lowest level of performance acceptable, right? So in other words, below the red number, it's unacceptable. It's failure. So what was the red, how, what was the red number of uh, customers' uh, interactions logged for him? So somewhere in the range of 75, 80. Why don't, why don't we choose 70 just for the example? Okay, great. And then between green and red is yellow. Okay. And mm -hmm. finally, the stretch goal, super green, stretch goal. What was his stretch goal? Well, we were thinking about 120, maybe 125. So let's really, really stretch it. Let's go 125. Okay, so we're done. So green, the goal is 100. Red is 70. Between uh, red and green is yellow, and then super green is 125, and that's how we read yellow green success criteria. So let's finish up Steve's example, right? So we have profit in the rear view mirror, what he's done in the past. We have future results, profit, hopefully better profits triggered by the right products, those are future results, and the leading indicator we picked here was the number of client suggestions logged. Now I'm going to show you how to follow this in the tool as well. 
So this is what we already filled out. And so we would fill out the leading indicator here, number of client suggestions logged. And then the green goal is 100. And then what was red I asked, that was 70. And then between, uh, you know, uh, 70 and 100 is yellow. That's, that's, that's your yellow. And then your stretch goal is 125. And don't forget the two things here, the test or my tips here. Does your leading indicator predict the right results? In other words, now you go back and you ask yourself, will this really get me, you know, products, uh, the right products, and will it help me with my profit? If not, try again. You've got the wrong one. And then can you actually, is it under your control? So I think now is a good time for us to pause and, and see if we have any questions, Ryan, from the audience. Yes, uh, we do have some questions. Uh, while I'm covering these questions, if you have questions for Patrick and Barry, please type those into your uh, question box control panel, and uh, we'll take as many of those as time uh, permits for us today. The first question is from Rajesh. Uh, Rajesh is asking, how, what is the best way to align various departments to this KPI? That's a very good question. So this KPI, this example will be for the company. And then I would ask every department, how can you actually impact that KPI? So operations may have a different way to impact that KPI. Now, it may not be the major thing that the department focuses on, but there is some way to impact that KPI. And so they may measure something else to help them impact that KPI, or if it applies to them, they can measure that same KPI for their department. But if it doesn't apply, I would say, well, you know, how do you impact that? And then what would you measure in your department that impacts that? Thanks, Patrick. Then I have another question from Brad. He said, did you establish a measurement for the EBITDA, the results? On the yes, list? I did. Uh, man, you are, a, you are a smart cookie. You saw that I didn't put up the red, yellow, green. Yes, I did. So yes, we would, we would establish the uh, result indicator. And we do the red, yellow, green the same way as we did for the leading indicator. We would ask the same questions. What's the goal? what's unacceptable, and what's a stretch goal. Thanks, and I have another question from Dave. He's asking, when a KPI is subjective, like successful interactions, how do you ensure accuracy? You know, I always get that question about accuracy, and I'll share with you that leading indicators sometimes is not about accuracy. Sometimes it's really more about getting the right actions. And at the end of the day, uh, you still need human beings, because, you know, unfortunately, uh, we live in a human world. So, you still need human beings. So I would say that yes, you, you'd have someone that would make the judgment call of whether or not uh, that was a good interaction or not. It is a bit subjective, yes? But the idea here is it would drive a lot of interactions. And yeah, you might get a couple in your database that, you know, kind of suck. But hey, that's life and that's fine. That's okay. Just don't worry about it because the ones that aren't great will not make it into your product. So that's fine. Thanks, Patrick. And I have one more from Mike. Mike's asking, how often do you update your KPIs and status them? Is it weekly? Is it monthly? And how yes, do you rally the hold, team around you know, them? So, Ryan, I'm going to hold that question because we're going to address how you communicate KPIs. And, and that's a lot of questions, dude. We've got to get going soon. <laughs> yeah, so there are great questions coming in. So let's, let's keep moving uh, for the sake of time. Go ahead. Okay, so the third learning point, and I'll take more questions at the end if, if, if we have time. I just want to make sure I... I uh, cover what I promised you guys I'll cover. So the third and last point is how do we communicate to get your team focused? Because I hate to tell you this, it ain't about the KPIs. You know, KPIs are nothing more than a tool. It's a tool to help you get focused. How you do that is how you communicate that and what your team does around the KPIs. So let's, let's talk about that for a little bit. So the question I want to ask you guys is your picture of KPIs. Is your team accountable and able to make the right adjustments to hit your plan? That's a question you should ask yourselves every single quarter. And if you cannot answer that question positively, you need to go back to work on your quarterly plan. Because guess what? You're about to employ the full force, all the energy of your company to make the plan for the quarter. If your team does not know how to be accountable to make the necessary adjustments to hit your plan in execution, you're not ready to go into the quarter yet. So you want to use your leading indicator. And I like leading indicators. Why? Because remember, leading indicators are through the windshield telling you about the future. So what are you going to do with that? The most important thing are two things. In order for your team to know how to use this KPI, it's got to connect to the plan. When I say the plan, I mean your execution plan. 
How does it connect to your plan for the quarter? How does it connect to the things you're actually doing? You've got to connect your doing to your measurement. Okay? What results will this actually drive? You need to take the time to explain this to your team. One of the pitfalls I see people, uh, or mistakes I see people make is that we develop the KPIs. It's so clear to us at executive team level, guess what? Because we built the thing. So of course it's clear to us. Then we fail to like slow down and explain that to our team. Sometimes you just slow down to go a little bit faster. Make sure you help them understand how this KPI connects to the plan. Then the next question is, what actions can they take? Slow down and have a discussion about that. Hey, if this KPI goes yellow or red, what actions can I take? How do I make a difference? How do I make a difference? Show me how I can make a difference. So take some time to communicate those two things to your team and you will be significantly stronger in your execution. And then somebody asked me that question earlier, right? Uh, the last question about how often. <coughs> I want you to get on the rhythm of accountability. I want you to meet weekly, weekly, weekly. And I want you to use your KPIs every week. I want you to review and work on your leading indicators. Because you have a 13-week race. And in this 13-week race, you get 13 shots at making sure your plan is successful. So if you only review your KPIs once a month, that's only two shots to make an adjustment. KPIs are for making adjustments. They're not pretty pictures on the wall. And so you want to look at them every single week. Now, if you say to me, Patrick, but my KPI can't be measured weekly, then, dude, I would say you've got the wrong KPI for this particular purpose of getting a team focused on the quarter. Wrong KPI. Measure that, that's fine, but you want something that you can actually measure every quarter, every week, to keep your team focused. Now, I'm going to show you a dashboard, but not Steve's. Steve's is confidential, uh, but I will show you a dashboard that can kind of help you get there. Okay? So... I want you to get your stuff up on a 13-week dashboard. So as you can see, in this particular example, it's about sales. It's a 13-week dashboard. And I want you to get your stuff up on a dashboard. I want it to be visual. I want it to be public. I want everyone to see it because guess what? Secret KPIs, they don't help anyone. Yeah, and so this is a screenshot of a Rhythm dashboard straight out of our Rhythm software. If you're not using Rhythm, well, that's fine, but you need to create that dashboard. In fact, uh, Patrick, I find it's critical to get this in a format that allows historical tracking and it's also a visual for you discussing your weekly meetings so that you can make adjustments and hold each other accountable. And that is that you can discuss it weekly, 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 just like you said a moment ago. We don't want to just meet, though, to, to have just meetings. What we really want to do is focus. We want to focus on solving the reds and we want to avoid train wrecks. So what we do is we coach our CEOs and, and client teams to discuss this at the weekly meetings. That's great because I find too often I see folks with red KPIs and there's no action plan. Mm -hmm. And we forget it's not the KPI that does the work. It's unfortunately us, it's the humans. So you need to have a corrective action plan. Every time you have a red KPI or a yellow one, you want to think through what is the corrective action. I, I like to call this adjustments, by the way. Right. What's the corrective action plan, the adjustment to make that go from red to green? So what we do as coaches is we step in and give suggestions about what that corrective action plan might look like, things that they might consider. Once they're agreed to, then they're held accountable to take those actions. So we hold our clients accountable to take actions. Well, that's right. And we also have conversations around that. So what we see here is a a copy of what a conversation thread might look like in Rhythm software. Now, what this does is allows our coaches to provide comments and suggestions directly in their dashboard where they're putting in their status updates, and they can see it immediately. Yeah, you know, uh, our clients really love this new feature in Rhythm 2 where they can actually join in the conversation anytime. Uh, I like to think of these as discussions, but this is what they like, right? They like that they can join in, number one, anytime. They love getting ideas and suggestions from our coaches. And the third is they love that their team members can jump into the discussion at any time and get up to speed without having them to repeat what happened before. Right. And that's pretty easy in the software. But here's the key point for anyone listening. You need to have the discussions. Create a framework within your team and within your company where the discussions, the right ones, happen. And so the feedback that I get in this process that has really helped up excuse me, help speed up the decision making when solving problems as a team. Yes, so if you can solve your reds, 
you can avoid getting blindsided, and then you can avoid the train wreck. But guess what? You can only avoid getting blindsided if you are using leading indicators. And so uh, 76 of you guys are using results indicators, and that's good, right? There is a place for results. You want to measure them. But I would highly suggest that you think about how to think through some leading indicators or just one leading indicator that will help you focus your team on the future of results for the quarter. So we will take some questions now. Uh, before we take questions, I just want to remind everyone that at the end of this webcast, there's a survey. It will pop up after the webcast ends. Please, please stay on and give me some feedback. You know, we're trying out a new format today with a Barry here. Uh, so I want to know if you guys enjoy the slowing down the pace and diving into a customer case study. Uh, let me know if you like that, because if you like that, I'll, I'll do more of those. So Ryan, I think it's a good time to take some questions before we finish up. <clears throat> Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a few questions from, uh, from the audience. Uh, for one is from Patricio. Uh, Patricio is asking, the weekly sales KPI in your example is calculated, is it calculated projecting uh, the quarter or just how that week went? So that's a good question. Let me go back to that slide if I can find it. So uh, in, this particular, in this particular one, the way we, we suggest doing this is we like you to status based on where you believe you're going to be at the end of the quarter. So what, why do I do that? Because let's say you're trying to make, let's say you're trying to get, you know, a million dollars in the last two stages, right, in this example of your pipeline. Uh, if you're going to status based on where you are, then it's always going to be red, right? It's going to be red, 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 and then yellow, and then finally green. It's better for you to say, okay, I want to, I want to, based on where I see the activity I have, I believe I'm going to be green at the end of the quarter. Now, you would say, but Patrick, that's subjective, right? Absolutely, because... The best executives in the world are self-aware. You're going to learn more and more about yourself. And the best executives in the world can forecast. And so what you want to do is forecast and then status your forecast. And then that allows you to take action. So red in this case in week three means that based on what I know, I am not going to make my quarter. I need help right now. Thanks, Patrick. I've got another question from Sally. Uh, she asked, you know, how does that rhythm comments thing work again? So this rhythm comment stream, uh, what's interesting about the rhythm comment stream uh, is that anyone can post a comment to specific KPIs or priorities. And then when that happens, the person who gets that priority gets notified by an email, and that triggers the conversation to begin. So that's why conversations get started faster. Thanks. And Chris is asking, I noticed you have numbers 1 through 13 on the dashboard. Is that per a quarter? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And so uh, I shared earlier that a quarter is a 13-week race. And I'd like us to think of a quarter that way. You've got 13 weeks. And so every week represents a shot you have at potentially modifying or adjusting your, your execution to achieve your plan. So that's why we, we status every single week and 13 weeks is a quarter. Thanks. And Vishal is asking, <laughs> best way to motivate the team to achieve the KPIs? I'm sorry, can you ask the question again, Ryan? How, how do we motivate the team to achieve the KPIs? How do we motivate the team to achieve the KPIs? Um, I think uh, the, the, the phrase comes to mind that uh, the beatings will continue until... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I think the, the best way to... <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, by the way, I do think that uh, sometimes we, we, we make poor use of accountability. So most times when I, when I talk about accountability, you know, people think that, that we're all going to like bash heads and whack people and I see the gnashing of teeth and the fear. Uh, and you don't, you, no one in the room needs help from me up to help you guys bash heads. We're all kind of natural born head bashes. So the best way to motivate your team is to really remind them that it's not about them. I want you to focus on the problem, not the person. Uh, thank them for highlighting something that's red, for example, because the earlier you get a red, the faster you can work on it and avoid that train wreck. So you want to thank people for bringing up the KPIs, which are red and yellow. You also want to remind them that, you no, know, this is if your culture allows this, but when, when something comes up like that, the team works on it and they will become more successful. So your culture has to support that, uh, but hopefully you work on it together, you don't focus on the person, you focus on the problem, and that person that brings it up actually gets more successful. 
So Barry, have you seen this? I have, and I was going to say that actually takes us back to your earlier point, create discussions. You create a framework and you have discussions, and then as a team you move to the right solutions. Yes. We have a lot of questions, guys, so I'm going to keep working through these. Uh, they're, they're excellent questions. Mark uh, is asking, is employee participation in the KPI development necessary for buy-in? Absolutely. Employee participation is awesome. I mean, can you imagine if I walked up to you, Ryan, and I said, hey, dude, your goal this quarter is X. I'm going to measure you this way, and, and it's really hard to get buy-in, right? So not only do you want buy-in, but usually the person in the field, the one actually doing the work, he or she actually has more knowledge about how to get stuff done. And so you want the participation, not just for buy-in, but so that you will have more intelligent KPIs that really help you to focus on getting the work done. Here's one from Matthew. Do you share one team's KPIs with other teams or peers? Yes. I, so first of all, I think that if you can have a transparent company, in other words, you, know, you share stuff uh, and you're transparent about who's doing what and what's going well, what's not, you can get more brains in a company working on problems. So yes, I totally believe in in being transparent and sharing your KPIs across departments. You'll never know when somebody in a different department has an idea that can help you. <clears throat> I'm going to take two more. Uh, just a long list of excellent questions. This one's from Sumit. Sumit is asking, how many leading indicators should be targeted? How many leading indicators should we target? So should let me, be targeted, like, you know, should we have 15 of these things, two of these, you know, what's the right number? Yeah, so let me reframe the question because that's a very wide question. I would say, you know, how many should we target to focus the team on a problem or a main thing for the quarter? And I would say one. One's better than two, two's better than three. When doing, dealing with KPIs, less is more. But I want to answer that question in a slightly different way. If you're asking me, hey, you know, how many leading indicators do I need for my whole company, that's a different question. You might need a leading indicator for every department so that they can see uh, what is the future of results looking like for them. <clears throat> and final question is from Danny. Danny's asking, are the KPIs set up to connect to the quarter plan and how? So I think, Barry, you've been relaxing too long in this room with me. Why don't you take that question up? Well, actually, we do like to see them connected. And, and let me start all the way from a three- to five-year plan and work backwards. Because you want a three- to five-year plan, you want to know where you're headed long-term. And from that, when we create an annual plan, we'd like to make sure that it is in some way linked to that three- to five-year. Now when we break back to quarterly planning, we also want to make sure that each piece of our quarterly plan, at least main pieces, are linked to our annual and are taking us in that direction. Otherwise, we won't be taking the incremental steps quarter by quarter that will get us there. Yeah, and the way you want to think about that is all KPIs are to, are to activate your doing. So if it's not connected to the plan and you're doing stuff, you're probably doing the wrong stuff. All right. Well, we've had a lot of excellent questions. There are many more uh, that we don't have time to uh, address today, but we will be answering many of these questions on our blog, which we'd love for you to subscribe to or look there for answers to your questions in the coming days. This concludes our webcast whoa, for whoa, today. Whoa. Hey, Ryan, we're yeah. not done. Ryan, Ryan, oh, you're not, not done. done. Oh, not done. Dude, dude, dude. We are going to conclude this. Uh, uh, to go over our three key learning points again. So Barry, you're going to help us uh, with our three learning points. So let's do that. Uh, we started first with a gift from Steve, him sharing his story with us and how to use KPIs to get your team focused. And we turned that into an open gift where we looked at what those three points were. And today, we want to make sure that you leave with these three key points in your mind. First one is how to use leading indicators to drive results in your company or your team. Second point that we want to leave you with is how to ask at least, at least five questions to determine the right KPIs. And the third point that we want to make sure you carry with you today is how to communicate KPIs with a dashboard to focus your team, to get everyone focused and aligned. 
And so we'd also like to thank Steve Navity for letting us share his story today. And just a big thanks to AccuQuilt for being a great client and a great company. Yeah, I mean, hey, dude, I really love your video thingy, man. So what is this called? We oh. promise everyone will tell them. We promised it's Video Scribe. Video Scribe. Video Scribe. Barry, thank you for building the Video Scribe. I love your thingy. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for the webcast. Thanks for joining us. So no more video scribes. I think we're actually done this time, right? Okay. Yes, we so, are. This concludes our webcast for today. Thanks so much, Patrick and Barry. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Please help us by taking a minute to give us some feedback about the webcast. The survey will automatically pop up after you exit the webcast. And there, the webcast was recorded. You'll get a link to that uh, as soon as it's available. Again, thanks so much, and everyone have a wonderful day.